Hello everybody, this is the last visual of the photosynthesis series and it's been a journey but we're here and this one we're just going to be focusing on the finishing touches and the overall picture of photosynthesis as well as the a little review of some of the key points that you need to know about for the test. So first of all, understand that since this is a biochemical pathway, the entire process is metabolized by enzymes which lower activation energies of all those chemical reactions. And this happens through multiple processes. It takes hundreds of steps, which in this actual presentation, as detailed as it was, it actually omitted a lot of the actual minutia or steps which happen in the middle of the process. So, but what that means is that if you were to deactivate any specific enzyme throughout the entire process, you could shut it down. So by controlling which enzymes are active, the cell can actually control whether or not photosynthesis is active or not. So that's actually very important. So remember that idea of allosteric inhibition, that by, by the product of the reaction, you can deactivate the enzyme to stop the reaction. So that means if there's too much ATP being produced or too much sugar being produced, although plants don't typically do that, but if there was such an event and the plants did want to shut it down, it would because um, it would regulate whether or not the cycle was on by deactivating enzymes. So enzymes are an opportunity to to think of it as both things that speed up things and also as on and off switches throughout this process. All right. Also, I want to reiterate the idea that this process, although the whole, look at the, the picture here of the plant cell in the corner. There's a lot of parts, cells in the plant that cannot perform photosynthesis. Only the mesophyll cells will perform photosynthesis. But the entire plant will perform cell respiration to burn sugar produced in the mesophyll cells for energy purposes. So really, the source of energy of life is cell respiration. The only difference is that all cell respiration requires sugar produced during photosynthesis, and only plants and algae and cyanobacteria can make their own. Okay? Also, remember that water is produced during this process as well. Even though it is consumed to make oxygen, six molecules of water are actually produced during the Calvin cycle, which explains why you need 12 to make the 12 ATPs, 12 trucks, and then six more during non-cyclic, uh, sorry, during cyclic photosynthesis to make 18 total for each glucose. Remember we talked about that? But those you also going to make six waters out of the Calvin cycle, so that means you, you consume six, but make six, so overall you, you still... Overall, you consume six in the process. So it's still the backwards of photosynthesis. Um, also remember that who is doing most of the photosynthesis in the world? Most of the photosynthesis in the world is being performed by plants, right? No, not right. Most people jump to that conclusion. But although plants are more massive to look at, there is way more algae than plants. And if you actually measure the mass of algae in the world, since there's so much ocean in the world, there's way more algae, way more algae mass than plant mass in the world, and algae are the true photosynthesizers producing oxygen for our atmosphere. Okay, also, how does this fit into diversity of life on Earth? If it wasn't for plants which make photosynthesis, you wouldn't have amino acids, glycerol, or glucose, which are, or any of the nucleic acids. So you wouldn't have DNA, you wouldn't have protein, you wouldn't have fat, you wouldn't have carbohydrates like polysaccharides such as glucose, starch, and glycogen. You wouldn't have energy for the cell. You wouldn't have genetic information. You wouldn't have structures and functions performed by proteins. You wouldn't have energy storage and insulation by fat. All the functions of the micromolecules which we discussed in the previous lectures are made possible by the production of the monomers which build these micromolecules. And the Calvin cycle doesn't only produce glucose, it produces G3P, which can, be, which can be used to make any of these monomers, right? So the plants are not just the sugar makers or energy makers, they're also monomer makers for all the macromolecules of life. But remember that in order to do those monomers, they're going to need nutrients, which are such as phosphate, nitrates, picked up by the roots of the plants. That's where the phosphate cycle, the nitrogen cycle that we talked about doing, doing uh, um, ecology all comes in. Now, also, uh, the last thing about this is the idea of the research. So it was research science that brought out to light how this process works. So we're going to give you a couple of examples. Calvin figured out the, the Calvin cycle by deactivating certain enzymes which are in charge of each step of the Calvin cycle. So by deactivating that step, you suddenly started accumulating and stopping the Calvin cycle there. 
then you reactivate the enzyme and the cycle continues. You deactivate another one, it stops here. So by sequentially deactivating enzymes, he figured out the order of the entire cycle. It took him years, a lifetime to figure that out. But after he figured out the whole chemistry, he won a Nobel Prize for it. Also, different scientists also study the light versus dark reaction business. For example, if you get a plant and you put it in the dark, it can still make sugar. So basically, that means that sugar is made, in, made either in the dark or in the light. So now we understand the whole light independent thing. Now the funny thing is that while that's happening, carbon dioxide is being consumed. What do you mean? You know, we, we did it in class, a few ways to measure carbon dioxide consumption, um, production. So the pH indicators go down when carbon dioxide is being produced, which means it will go up if the carbon dioxide is being consumed. So, and there's other more sophisticated ways of me measuring carbon dioxide consumption. And the scientists actually figured out that even with the absence of light, carbon dioxide was being trapped and sugar was being made. So then they figured out, hold on a second, carbon dioxide is light independent. The, the sequestration or fixation of carbon doesn't depend on light. And that has also nothing to do with oxygen or water. Because even if you don't put water in that plant, it can still make sugar as long as it has some ATP stored. So you let the plant with water and light, it will store ATP. Then you take all the water away, all the light away. It will still make sugar out of carbon dioxide, showing that water and light are not necessary for that one process. That is how the scientists figured out that the dark cycle was about fixating carbon to make sugar and it had nothing to do with water and light. Now, if you let that go for a long time, all the energy that's produced during the light go, runs out and the plant is unable to do its process. So that's why plants that live in the poles or the northern hemisphere, they go through hibernation stages where they lose all their leaves and they basically sleep for months on a time, lower their metabolism, consume less glucose, and they're burning through the glucose that they store in starch throughout the entire summer to survive during the winter. So um, that's why it's so important. But remember that in, in a small scale, the plants will continue the carbon cycle fixation even in the absence of water and light in the short term. In the long term, it will need the ATP and you need the APH mm -hmm. to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, also, those light reactions. How do they figure it out that it had nothing to do with carbon dioxide? They notice that even without carbon dioxide, so the, you take all the carbon dioxide away, you make the environment only have oxygen in it. The plants will still make oxygen. All it needs is water. If you take away the water though, no oxygen. So they figured out that the light reactions, which happen in the light, were, about, was, were all about making um, oxygen from water. And if you take out the way the light, the plant makes sugar, but it doesn't make oxygen, and it doesn't consume water. So by playing with these experimental designs, they actually figured out the actual processes were two independent processes, which kind of depend on each other through those electron carriers. So that's phenomenal science that took years to develop and Nobel Prizes all galore to all the people who discovered mm -hmm. this pro these processes. Now, the last thing I want to do is um, go through a list that's available in your lecture guide of what you need to know for the test, okay? So you do need to know the role of photosynthesis in the ecosystem and the order of energy flow and the relationship of photosynthesis to cell respiration. You've got to know the actual formula for the reaction. You have to know oxidation and reduction and that photosynthesis is all about that. You have to know it involves electron transfers. You have to know the structures such as the leaf structure, the plant structure, the mesophyll cells, the chloroplasts, the pigments of, that are involved in photosynthesis. Uh, you have to know why plants change color. You have to know why they're green. You have to know the sequence of the non-cyclic photosynthesis steps. You have to know the difference between light-dependent and light-independent reactions. You have to know what non-cyclic pho cyclic photosynthesis is all about and how it doesn't need water, but it also doesn't produce the truck. You have to know that either the cyclic or the non-cyclic will both do chemiosmotic production of ATP to oxidative phosphorylation in a process very similar to that the process that's performed during cell respiration. All right? It charges the inside, the lumen of the thylakoid membrane 
full of protons which are then sent through the um, uh, ATP uh, synthetase to power the production of ATP. You have to know that the light independent reaction actually depends on the light dependent reaction to, because it needs those electron carriers, which is why cyclic photosynthesis that doesn't make the NADPH, it makes it impossible for the cycle. It, it's not enough by itself. It's needed because you need those six extra ATPs that it produces, but without it, uh, you, you would, um, you would, you would not have, well, sorry, without the non cyclic, you would definitely not have the Calvin cycle. All right? You also have to know that carbon is fixated in the stroma through the light independent reactions, which is what produces molecules like glucose, but not just glucose. That, G3, that G3P molecule can become anything, including amino acids, glycerol, and the basics for nitrogenous basis of DNA. You also have to know that ATP is produced during the light reactions, but consumed in the rebuilding of Rubisco, three to rebuild the Rubisco, and six total um, per time that you do the, the cycle for each, each time you create those six G3Ps. You also have to know that you have to spend twice to make each glucose on, the, on that cycle. You have to know the difference between C3, C4, and camp plants. You know, regular plants, plants that separate the cycle by spatially by doing it in different cells and do a different chemical process that prevents photorespiration. And then the camp plants that do the same thing, but in addition to that, only open the stomata during the night to prevent evaporation during the day. Also, you have to know that photorespiration is a problem for plants, especially C3 plants, because in hot, hum lack of humidity, light intensity, high intensity in, of in light environments, the rubisco starts trapping more oxygen and carbon dioxide, which puts a crank on the Calvin cycle that actually consumes energy instead of producing glucose and screws up the plant and might end up killing it. Um, you also have to know the photosynthesis research, which is in charge of discovering these things. How do they figure it out? How do they put this thing together? I mentioned that on this video. You also have to know that enzymes can be used to turn on this process on and off, which is how Calvin figured out the steps of the Calvin cycle. You have to know that plants perform photosynthesis only in the mesophyll cells and that the rest of the plant, including the mesophylls themselves during the night especially, will need cell respiration to survive just like you and me do. You also need to know that algae is the primary responsible person for photosynthesis and that plants do it, but there's way more algae than plants in the world and so they are the ones which are the primary producers for the, for the world's food chains. And finally, you have to know the importance of photosynthesis for life because without it, you wouldn't have energy for chemical reactions, anabolic processes that power life. But more importantly, the atmosphere would not be 21% oxygen. It would not have any ozone protecting us from the ultraviolet light. Photosynthesis transformed this planet and made life on Earth possible. So it is definitely one of the most important topics of the year. And yes, one of the most complex topics of the year but it's definitely worth learning about. It's fascinating, and I hope you enjoyed the labs we're doing in class to learn more about this as well. All right? So thank you very much, and I hope photosynthesis was a good journey, and go eat some plants. Get some sugar in you. All right? Goodbye.